Hello. What is up, Cobra fans? Hey, what's Hello. up? So, ha, ah, yeah, we got a good one today, guys. Ha! Ah. Hello! <laughs> we have Gemma M. Young joining us once again. Uh, today, we're actually going to be talking about how to run a successful Kickstarter. Well, a successful uh, crowdfunding. Uh, so, it's not just Kickstarter. That's true. So, this yeah. This could be for any type of crowdfunding campaign. Ooh. This, could, this could be important if you sell comic books on Kickstarter mm -hmm. or if you sell comic books or a product on Indiegogo or for Jared when he's selling Girl Scout cookies with his daughters. I feel like this is important all the way across the board. Possibly, yes. <laughs> yeah. So don't forget to uh, chime in on chat. We love hearing from you. Um, you know, If you want to ask some questions, jump on in. Uh, it would also be extremely helpful if you share out the video as well. And, uh, you know, hit that like, subscribe, all that typical YouTube stuff. So, um, Gemma, uh, what can you tell us about this upcoming project that you got going on? Um, so, I am currently working on my 13th Kickstarter crowdfunding <laughs> campaign. Holy and, crap. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And... Um, okay, so I'm working on a comic called Temerity, which is a sci-fi adventure comic that I'm working with um, collaboratively with Chad Harden, who is known for um, being the artist on Harley Quinn. He, so he's worked for DC, Boom, uh, Marvel, and Dark Horse. So he has quite the experience in comics. And um, so we partnered up to do our own creator owned comic because there's not that many sci-fi comics out there in the traditional comic sphere. There's lots of superheroes, but not very much sci-fi. And that is something that we both wanted to work on and be we able to actually own because when you work for other companies like DC and mm -hmm. Marvel, it's all work for hire. And mm -hmm. very rarely do the people who work on these products, these projects, own anything. We've got a little video that you supplied us, actually. I'm no, please to... don't. Oh, no. I, I feel like I need to. <laughs> no. I, I feel like everybody would be very interested. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll meet in the middle, and I'm just going to play my favorite part. Uh, Wonder Frame's powers activate. In the form of an ice pencil. In the form of a fluffy cat. Thank you so much <laughs> for sending that. <laughs> that one, the, the reason why I don't like sharing that one is because it's for the first issue. So mm -hmm. a lot of the information for the rewards and etc. are a bit outdated. Mm -hmm. So... So you're saying the Wonder Twins reference is outdated? Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> That's cutting edge. Uh, it's uh, just the best thing ever. Uh, let me check in with chat real quick here, guys. Uh, Rose Kirby on YouTube says, good morning from the UK. Hello, Top Chat. Hi, Crypto Comics. Hi, Gemma. To everyone. Hello, Rose. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Andrew Books on YouTube says, hello. Hi, Andrew. GF Andrew D 1981 on Twitch. Or Crutchy the Great. I think, I think we're going to promote him to the great now. Say, <laughs> oh, hope it's been a great day. This is going to be a great stream. It's always a great stream when Gemma's on here. We always seem to have a really good time. Gemma, <laughs> not so much, but we have a great time. <laughs> you guys are cool. I mean, I had brothers. They're, you know, whatever. <laughs> thanks, Gemma. Thanks for the, appreciate that. Thanks for the support. <laughs> So She's like, eh, you guys are all right. I deal, I deal with it slightly worse. Yeah. Not many, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Toxic on YouTube comes to say hello. I've returned for my two month visit. Well, thanks for coming back. We're we're not doctors, you know. You don't just come every so often. You got to be here all the time. Toxic. Yeah, Gemma only plays a doctor on TV. <laughs> D Jackson five three one says hello, Crypto Comics and Gemma. Hi. That's an interesting way of saying hello. I like that. I might have to steal that. Let's see. Willow on Facebook says, hey, everyone. Hey, Willow. 
Uh, nobody's losing on Twitch says hello. I'm just gonna start going quickly because you guys are starting to get fast. Uh, <laughs> Jackson five three one says needed more purple. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, my assistant painted that picture of the fluffy cat. Mm. Otherwise, it probably would have been an entirely purple fluffy cat if it had been me. <laughs> Andrew D comes in and says the tech guy fixed his camera. I actually bought a new camera and then realized right before this stream that it's actually software issues. So if I freeze up, just expect me to drop off the stream and not ruin it any further. I mean, right I, now, no. <laughs> right now, I'm just ru ruining it slightly. Uh, nobody's losing on Twitch comes to say, well, the stream is indeed already better than the last one. The last one was rough. Yeah, we, had was all, we had so many tech issues, Gemma. Like, I froze entirely. So it didn't matter. Jared's audio was cutting in and out the entire stream. And then he started doing a show and tell for some reason. I don't know. We it don't was, know what was going on there. I'm pretty was sure drugs were involved. but I don't think they were. But we're going to Maybe the carry on drugs. Look at this. I'm wearing my Segway pants. Let's uh let's go back over to the Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so I have a question uh, to start things off. Um, when you're actually creating a comic, what stage should you be at before you actually decide? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger on this uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo or anything like that. Um. Generally, you want your product as finished as it can be before you go to Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Um, the biggest problem, um, we've all heard crowdfunding horror stories. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of those horror stories, you know, where you, you know, they make a lot of money and then no one gets their product. A lot of that stems from the creator not having the product ready to go. And just thinking, once I have the money, then I'll be able to make it and everything will be fine. And there's a lot that can go wrong between getting the money and making the thing. And when you are crowdfunding, um, there are certain expectations that your backers have um, that you need to, these people are supporting you and offering you money for something. Um, they are you know, they do they do it to be generous, but they also do expect something. And it's important for you as a creator to make sure that you can deliver on what you've promised. Okay. Um, so is it still uh, okay to use sites like uh, GoFundMe or something like that to get to that uh, finishing point? Um, it really just depends. Um Personally, I I don't really go to go, GoFundMe because that is generally just more charitable contributions, mm -hmm. and they're not really for projects or businesses. They're for usually for individuals and their needs. Um, what was the original question? <laughs> oh, um, like what stage should you be at before you start your campaign? Yes, the original question. So, in general, try to be as far along as possible. And then if you hit a point where it's like, I really do need funding to continue this, then it is okay to probably start considering crowdfunding. But um, generally, if it's just time that you need to invest, then invest that time to make it as complete as possible. Hmm. Okay. So... Yeah. <clears throat> I get, how do you set your goals? I mean, that's that's kind of a big question. That is a big question. Um, so the first thing that we need to talk about before we can set a goal is what are we creating? So first you need to know exactly what you're trying to put out there. So this was, you know, this, this is generally talking about comics but this can go for anything that you might be working on. I've done pin projects where I've done enamel pins mm -hmm. and props as well as art books and comics as well. So you need to figure out what it is you want to offer to your backers. Mm -hmm. And then you need to find out how much that is going to cost you up front to make it a real physical object if you're providing a physical object. So 
I actually have a little cheat sheet that I use to um, figure out exactly what I need to make a project a reality. And if you want to go ahead and share my screen, I have it pulled up and I can kind of show you what that is. This might look scary. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers there and um, I'll explain it in just a minute. I'm actually gonna- Our user demographic rates very high with spreadsheets. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And just so you guys know, um, I have here a cheat sheet that's for pins specifically, but you can convert this to comics very easily. Mm -hmm. And I actually have this as a shareable uh, document on my Instagram link tree. So if you go to my Instagram page, which is at Gemma M. Young, and you click on my link tree, there is a link to this spreadsheet that you can download and edit to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things to consider when you're making your product. Um, here, I'm going to show you Temerity specifically. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. Maybe. Here we go. And um, so for a book, we need to print the book. So you'll want to find a manufacturer that you want to go with, and you'll have to do research into that to, to actually print the book. And um, I actually have two here based on two different manufacturers. One is in the US and one is in China. The, diff the reason for this is here we have in the US, um, we can do smaller print quantities in the US. And um, it's this one is in particular is digital print, so it's not offset, so it's cheaper per unit for smaller quantities. And so here I have issue one, if I order 500 units, I found out it'll cost $2.25, which my total is $1,115 or $25. And then like, if you need to pay colorist, how much is that gonna cost? If you have to ship it from the manufacturer to your house, how much will that cost? If you need a letterist, if you need editing, if you need variant covers, you have your costs here and then you tally it up. Mm -hmm. And that's your number of your base costs for your project. If you're doing pins, you'll wanna find a manufacturer, find out exactly how much it's going to cost per unit and have a really solid idea of exactly how much this is gonna cost. So this is for 500 issues. Hopefully we do bigger campaign where we need more books printed, in which case I have my other manufacturer here, which is for 2,500 books with a unit cost of 75 cents. And if we do a print run of 2,500, it's gonna be close to $5,000. Oh, wow, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> lots of numbers. You need to make sure you know your numbers very clearly so you can set the correct parameters for your project and you don't go bankrupt. The biggest problem Kickstarters and crowdfunding have is they don't have a solid idea of what these numbers are going to be. They ballpark it, they crowdfund, they have a successful campaign, and then suddenly the the, the book costs, you know, $2,000 more to print than they thought or, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then they're like, suddenly like, I can't make this thing. I don't have mm -hmm. the money, even though I raised 10, 20, 40, $100,000. Oh. There have been campaigns that have made, you know, six digit campaigns. And because they didn't correctly allocate their money, um, they ended up going bankrupt. Ouch. Oh, it's that's, very, very that's bad. hurt my ego. Yes. And, and also, um, it really hurts your audience. If you've built up an audience that, you know, you have $100,000 worth of backers and then you're not able to deliver, the chances of those backers coming back mm -hmm. is very, very small. And the idea of crowdfunding, um, is that you build slowly as you continue to crowdfund and you build your rep your repertoire and your 
you become, um, you establish yourself as a reliable person. Most Kickstarters that make lots and lots of money, it's because they've done lots and lots of Kickstarters previously mm -hmm. that have proven to their audience that re they're reliable. And if they back it, they will get what they asked for. Okay. So yeah, we're discussing that a little bit. A lot of times, um, if I'm recommending a Kickstarter to anybody, uh, it's because I've actually backed them in the past mm -hmm. and I've gotten everything that was promised. I've gotten it in at least somewhat of a timely manner. Um, you know, I'm not like going to hold somebody like, Oh, it was, you know, three months later before Ooh, I, I will. Got it. Boy, uh, well, I tell you what, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, you know, there's a lot of things that go into Kickstarters that the backer just pays money. They think they'll mm -hmm. get the thing. And sometimes the creator's like, I'll get the money and then I'll make the thing and everything will go mm -hmm. fine. And uh, there's a lot that can go wrong, which is why I'm doing this live stream to help that from <laughs> not happening. Okay. Gemma M. Young, the hero we all needed. <laughs> all right. So this is just the first part of figuring out what your your um, your actual goal should be. There is mm -hmm. a second step that you need to consider when establishing your funding goal. And that is fees. Ooh, Ooh, I hate that word. Can we never say that again? <laughs> it's important to know exactly how much everything will cost. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the product. There's a lot of other things that go into making something a reality. So here I've got my lovely spreadsheet. Um, I'm actually going to switch to my other, my pin Kickstarter cheat sheet, because this is the one people can download. Um, in general, people spend between $30 and $50 mm -hmm. average pledge. And so here I've created this little breakdown of um, what your, how many backers you have versus how much your overall funding will be if they make, if your average pledge is $30 versus $50. So this is just like a general really quick, you know, okay, mm -hmm. if I want to make 10,000, I need to have 200 backers, um, you know, at least 200 backers pledging at $50. And um, this becomes important when it comes to shipping. If you are um, collecting shipping during the campaign. Sorry, just a second. Um, all right. So this is just a quick breakdown of that. And then we have our base funding spend like funding levels right here. Mm -hmm. So on the left is how much your campaign actually has made. Um, I've broken it down to 500, 750, you know, pretty low numbers at first. And then it just kind of bumps up after a while. Um, you can change these numbers however you want if you want it like closer to or farther apart. And it should correctly send everything down the line. Okay. Um, so if you, this is the amount you raised, you can expect about 5% of your backers to drop out after the campaign is ended. This is usually from declined cards or their card has expired or they file a charge back on their card after the campaign is ended. It's, it's just something that happens and you want to account for that correctly. So you're going to lose about 5% of your funds after the campaign has ended just in that. And then you have your Kickstarter fees and this is 8%. Indiegogo, I believe is also 8%. 5% um, comes from Kickstarter itself and 3% comes from the credit card transaction processing. So, you know, here I have this amount times 8%. This is how much Kickstarter will take out of your campaign. And, then, and keep in mind, anybody that's watching, um, if you're watching this in the future, those those might variate and change over time. Yes, so make yes. sure you check on Indiegogo or whatever crowdfunding campaign platform yes. you're using. 
Mm -hmm. Very good disclaimer. And you can always just go in here and change this number and then just drag it all the way down and it will update it. Um, then <clears throat> if you're going to use a survey such as uh, Backerkit or Crowdox, you'll want to account for that in here. And for this one, I just put 200. Um, you'll want to go in and figure out what back or, sur back or survey service you're going to use and exactly how much they will take out. And then you have your product cost here. And then you, um, and then for shipping, if you're charging during the campaign, this is where things get dicey is shipping. Um, <laughs> It's very, very hard to account for how much shipping will take from your funds. Mm -hmm. And my next campaign, I'm actually charging shipping after the campaign has ended mm -hmm. to hopefully avoid the shipping pitfall. We've done pretty well in the past, but it's always pretty dicey. Um, the most, one of the more recent Kickstarters I did was the Art of Starbite. And typically international only makes up 20% of the backers. And mm -hmm. when, you know, when you ship to the U.S., it might cost $5. But as soon as you're shipping outside the U.S., it costs $26 to ship that exact same product. Oof. And if 20% of you, you know, 20% of that is your funding goal, then, you know, you just account, you know, 20% of these is going to be $26 instead of five. Um but with Starbite, she had a 38% international oh, wow. um, backing, which um, really, really cut into our funding, total funding net growth um, because so many backed international. And the shipping on Kickstarter Indiegogo goes towards your funding goal. So if you make $100,000, but 26,000 of it is going towards shipping, you're not actually making that money. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're doing stretch goals and you have to pay for the stretch goals too, that's something you have to account for. So much fun. <laughs> so if you're shipping, so this column right here is if your average backer is spending $30, this is how much you can expect to spend on shipping. And if your um, average backer is spending fifty dollars, this is how much you can spend or expect on shipping. Um, you want your backers to spend more per pledge, simply because of the shipping aspect. <laughs> if that makes sense, that mm -hmm. that ratio of shipping versus actual funds going towards you and your project. Okay. And then, so if you. Right here is my net if your average backer spends $30 versus if they spend $50. And your funding goal is when your $30 hits a positive number. $5,000 for this one. Ah. For Temerity, because we're charging shipping after the campaign, we hit our positive at $4,000. So after product expenses, shipping, fees, all of that stuff, we hit the net zero at around $4,000. So that is our funding goal. Okay. That was a very lengthy explanation. I am sorry. <laughs> that was fantastic though. It yeah. really was. Um, we skipped over just a couple of things though in there. So one thing you mentioned is actually like backer kit using yes. process like that is yeah. there a level that you would recommend people to look look towards using those type of elements do you think that a small kickstarter can still benefit off of oh, those yes. types of surveys yes so and why? okay so backer kit actually just bought crowdox so some of my information will be outdated one year from now because they're going to merge into one conglomerate mm -hmm. um i think for the next year my information will be somewhat correct <laughs> so backer kit takes a percentage of your overall funding goal so if i make thirty thousand, backer kit will take three percent of that or five percent depending on the um uh product level what uh 
subscription that you choose. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, whereas CrowdOx um, charges a flat 75 cents per backer with a minimum of 450, I believe. So, you know, if, if you calculate that out, I, I had this once memorized. So if you have 450 divided by 0 0.75 75 cents, uh, you need 600 backers to hit the 75 cent range per backer. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, whereas Kickstarter is just a percentage. In general, for smaller campaigns, I use backer kit because if I only make 10,000, dollars three percent of ten thousand dollars is uh three hundred dollars is that right i can math um, Sounds right to me. <laughs> um it's lower than the 450 dollars of crowd ox um so depending on the number of backers i get in my funding goal i will go with one or the other in general um, I'm trying to think real quick. I have found it always beneficial to have a survey service after the Kickstarter or the crowdfund campaign. The reason for that is you can upsell, um, you can offer upgraded products, add-on products, and things like that. They also have a tip jar. If the backer is really pleased with what you've done, they can add an extra amount in there. Um, Generally, you can make another 10 to 20 percent on the back end of the survey. Really? Yes. Hmm. So, you know, if I made if I made ten thousand dollars, I can expect to make another thousand dollars doing a survey service. And it only cost me maybe three hundred dollars to set it all up. OK, so you're still making money. Um, also, it's just a really great way to um, be able to figure out what your backers want. Um, the Kickstarter surveys are not that great. Um, they're a little bit hard to set up. And if you have like a lot of um, really nuanced rewards, um, they're hard to set up. Like um, if you're doing a pin Kickstarter and you wanna offer 10 pins, then a lot of people set it up in a way where you just click which pin you want. And it's actually pretty easy for the backer to submit 11 pins they want if they only backed 10 pins. And so that kind of becomes a logistical nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to go and check and make sure, all right, my backer asked for 11 pins. Did they actually back 11 pins? Okay. Um, <clears throat> So you were saying that uh, you've used some of, I can't remember the name of the the survey. Um, Backer Kit and CrowdOx. Yeah. Uh, do you use any, or would you even recommend any uh, other programs uh, or companies for like, say, the fulfillment aspect of it or anything like that? Um, there are companies that will do fulfillment. I have looked into some of them. For me in particular, they were just way too costly. It was, okay. um, it was overall just a lot more economical for me to do it myself or to pay a friend or family or someone that I trust to do the fulfillment for me. And also that way I get to control who gets the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like I, I'd rather pay someone I trust and know and help them out if they're, you know, needing money, then to give it to some fulfillment service. So how do you yeah. actually keep all the fulfillment straight? I mean, there's like, uh, I believe with the uh, Temerity, uh, you had, what was it like 500 backers or something like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, my that biggest campaign, <laughs> my biggest campaign was Starbucks and she had 1600 backers. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have images of you lugging in 1,600 packages to the post office? Uh, no. I make my assistant do that. <laughs> oh. I honestly have never been to the post office. 
I've made my assistant do it every time. I'm like, I don't want to do it. You do it. <laughs> oh, wow. If your assistant is watching right now, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Yep. <laughs> And yeah. yeah, every fan appreciates your assistant. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, and they it's, deserve a raise. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, I gave them a raise. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> um, yes. But so, I mean, so, how so do what you keep on trade? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. We're asking the same thing. Sorry. How do how do you keep them all straight? What tips and tricks do you have for everybody? Um, I mean, that's big. The big survey. Group. The survey helps out a lot. It collects the shipping address. Um, it knows exactly how much they've pledged, what they pledged. It knows every single item that is inside that person's reward. Um, and then from there, you just print a packing slip and it has that person's order with everything they've ordered and how much and where it's going. And then we put that in a giant stack and we have all of our products in one spot that they can just grab everything they need, put it in the package, wrap it up, and then they slap the packing slip on there. And then it goes over to someone who um, goes on to ShipStation. We, we integrate with ShipStation. BackerKit will actually, and CrowdOx will actually push straight into ShipStation. And um, you can input beforehand all the weights of all the products. So when you create your label, it already knows exactly how much it's going to weigh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can actually bulk export labels. You can print 10, 20, 100 labels all at once. And you just slap them on there and you drop them off at the post office. Hmm. And if you do it through ShipStation as well, um, it'll keep track of all the orders that have been sent out and it will notify your backers when it's been shed, sent out with their tracking, and then it updates it in backer kit that it has been shipped. So you can see exactly how many orders you've shipped and what you have left, and how many people haven't filled out their survey. Okay. That is very cool. Yeah. So with, with that, how much do you... How, how, what's a good way of wording this? What percentage would you... Would you say that as far as total shipping costs that you spend between shipping as compared to just the products for shipping, for example, boxes, tubes, tape, mm. address labels even? I mean, when you break that all down. Um, I try to keep my costs of actual shipping materials to under $2 a package. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I consider when I'm deciding how much to sell a product or reward level for. It's like, okay, can $2 of this go into shipping and handling fees? Wow, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that you've personally had an offer as a tier element or anything like that that you wouldn't in the future based on the difficulty of shipping? For example, I know slabs are very hard um, to ensure the safe, that they safely get to a buyer, but are there any um, other things? Like that? I've avoided those types of things. Mm -hmm. The hardest things to ship out are um, prints. So mm -hmm. yeah, this is something I actually want to take a second to talk about. Um, oh. Yeah, so when you're setting up your, your crowdfunding campaign, you know, you have your product that you want to sell and you need to think about how you're going to ship it. And then also a lot of times um, to kind of um, alleviate costs of the campaign or give things for, sorry. A lot of times they'll add extra products mm -hmm. that a person can buy to kind of create, you know, like you want your backer to spend $50. So you have to create $50 worth of product for your backer to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generate a value. Yes. Right. Yeah. Words in my mouth. Um, I got <laughs> same team, Gemma. Same team. Ooh, anyways, <laughs> um, not exactly the most eloquent person ever. Anyways, I disagree. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> so another pitfall that I've noticed a lot of crowdfunding campaigns will fall into is they like, okay, we're going to offer all of this stuff. We're going to offer t-shirts, we're going to offer ball caps, we're going to offer 
keychains and we're gonna offer big prints because they're super cool, but they don't think about what that's gonna do for packaging. So, um, and right. then also they're like, well, this is one campaign that I saw they were doing music. So they're making a music album and they're like, well, people really want an art book with this music album. And they didn't really want to make the art book, but they offered it as a reward anyways. And several years later, the art book still isn't made because their heart really wasn't into making that product. And they did it because they thought their people, their backers wanted it. And it was another way to generate more income. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being a rather big pitfall for them. And it was quite unfortunate. Um, so it, when you're making a product, think, do I actually want to make this thing? And if things get tough, do I, will I still want to make this thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and, and then also think about shipping. If you're ordering t-shirts, that makes your package a lot bigger. If mm -hmm. you're, original product is a comic book and you're offering prints, how are you going to ship that print with a comic book? You can't roll it into a tube with a comic book in that tube, but also you don't want to send a massive package this big because the chances of it getting damaged in the mail goes up significantly. So when I make a, when I add these subsidiary, um, is that the right word? items. Um, I think, will this fit into my packaging that I have set up? And will it increase the weight significantly? Will I have to spend more in shipping? Um, things like that. Hmm. So yeah, if you're, you're offering a comic book, but one of your add on and it's eight ounces, but you have an add on that's a giant art book that's a pound and three ounces you have to think okay if i'm shipping this to canada eight ounces is ten dollars but a pound is 25 dollars. you have to account for that in your add-ons <laughs> and your shipping so i've seen a lot of people um add on stuff from other people's like campaigns uh, i've gotten comics that had like you know, here's the comic, but uh, they also threw in some comics from a friend of theirs or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, that seems like it would complicate everything so much more because now you have almost two points uh, for fulfillment. Uh, um, not necessarily. If you have a survey and you have all the boxes in your basement already, then it's all listed on there and you just grab it. The hardest part with that is dealing with taxes. Mm. Mm. Um, this is something we're working on with Temerity is like, okay, if Chad's business offers something in the campaign and my business offers something in the campaign, um, how does that work with taxes? How do we pay each other? All that kind of stuff. Ah. Well, we might not want to get too far into that rabbit hole on this stream. Guys. <laughs> yes. Um, let's, let's not talk about it. Yeah. And, and for anybody that's watching, the reason I say that isn't because the information isn't, you know, very important, but because that is for sure information that won't be accurate a year from now. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, you have to talk oh. to your, your accountant, tax yeah. person, please. But definitely make sure to check into it. Yes. And well, we also have lots of other stuff to talk about, and we're already 40 minutes into the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Cool. We're fine with it. So, okay, I got another question about, uh, this is directly related to your uh, newest campaign. Uh, you're actually running Indiegogo and Kickstarter at the exact same time. Yes. Um, how do the stretch goals work with that? Um, this is interesting. I have never done this before, but I have seen other creators do it. Um, I believe Billy Tucci is one of them with his comic, She. And there's also very large product campaigns, like for vacuums and stuff, that do this as well. And basically, I'm running stretch goals based on the combined funding of both campaigns. Mm -hmm. And like some of the rewards for the Indiegogo stretch goals might be a little bit different than the Kickstarter. Like if 
the stretch goal is a sticker, Indiegogo will get a certain sticker and Kickstarter will get a certain sticker that are, are different just to kind of like make things a little bit different and more exciting. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to be, I guess, backing both now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're also doing that with the covers as well. Is that correct? Yeah. So Indiegogo has its own cover and Kickstarter has its own cover. And part of it also is just for marketing as well, because then um, the Indiegogo campaign feels like something that's a little bit separate from the Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's geared towards different audiences. It's something okay. we're trying out. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so many cool variants though. Oh yeah. So um, are those, um, the covers and stuff going to be the same uh, for the digital versions as well as the uh, actual, the floppies? I hadn't thought that far ahead, honestly. <laughs> That's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> Um, for the PDFs, yes, I'll probably, I'll probably do different covers. So if they back the Indiegogo, they get the PDF with that cover and Kickstarter's its own cover. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty hmm. easy to set up, I believe. So, yeah. And real quick here. Hey, chat, if you guys have any questions for JAMA regarding crowdfunding campaigns and those kind of things, uh, make sure you throw it up on the chat. We'll be sure yes. Happy there are any questions because this stuff is pretty complicated a lot of times people just see a campaign they're like oh shiny i want this thing and <laughs> you know it could, oh i feel attacked right now there's <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot to that can go into it and you know there are campaigns that totally they fund but in the end they fail and honestly i I'm surprised it doesn't happen more frequently because there's a lot that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, got a question from Rose. So what time will this happen on the 19th? So we, 20th? Yeah, so we're launching the Kickstarter on the 19th at 10 a.m. That's the current plan. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, uh, mountain time, because mountain? that's where I live, and I don't exist before 10 a.m. <laughs> okay. Uh, for, for those of you who do, that's actually noon Eastern time. So. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I am not a morning person. Yeah, so Rose, uh, I believe yeah. for you, what, what is that? That's... 8 p.m. I think Rose's time. I'm trying to get really good about that because Rose is on almost every one of our videos, but she's in the UK. And I, you think it's hard figuring out Eastern to Mountain and stuff? Wait till somebody. Like, <laughs> it's an eight-hour difference from Mountain time, so it'll be around 4 p.m. I believe. Four. Wow, I was way off. I was way off. Don't don't ever listen to me again, Rose. Just give up on it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, where was I going with this? Yeah, so we're launching on Kickstarter the first day. Kickstarter is where our, our established audience is, so we're pretty sure that we can make our funding goal there relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. And then once we hit our funding goal, um, we plan on launching on Indiegogo because Indiegogo has flexible funding, um, which means that whether you meet your goal or not, you still get the funds. So we want to make sure that we can make the product before we launch on Indiegogo. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Jackson on oh. Twitch says, or asks, uh, how do you combat the stress of running a Kickstarter? I think about all the cool things I'm making and all the cool people I'm helping out. I like that. And all the cool fans that are getting the cool thing. Yeah, that too. That helps too. Yes. Oh, she's thinking about us guys. <laughs> yeah. That's why I snuck it in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is a weird kind of question with Indiegogo. There's uh, they have that referral program. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if they with kind of where you're combining the two, uh, could they still take part uh, even if they refer you to your Kickstarter or is it just strictly with uh, Indiegogo? I believe with Indiegogo, it's just on Indiegogo. Okay. I am not entirely sure about that. I have not 
really done much on Indiegogo, all truth be told. Mm -hmm. But I do know that on the surveys, um, like Backer King Craddocks, they can import both into the same project. Okay. I want to ask fun questions now. Chat can join in <laughs> if you guys would like to sound off. But Gemma, what is the coolest? I'm going to word it this way. What is, what's the, your favorite Kickstarter that you were ever a part of? Which one takes the crown right now? And you can't like, say Temerity Runaway. That I helped but, make? At a part of it that you maybe just worked on with the creator to help them. Perhaps you were just a featured artist on a Kickstarter at some point. Maybe you just did a cover for one that was your favorite. Uh, Maybe you made tiny little 3D printed jewels. I mean, I'm just, you know, throwing out ideas here. <laughs> uh, there's one, but I'm not going to talk about it. <gasps> um, sorry. Oh. And... <laughs> But I think the Starbite one was definitely like one of my favorite ones to work on. Cool. Very cool. Way to not cop out by saying Temerity One. I figured for sure. Oh, uh, Temerity <laughs> One was super stressful. It was That's very fun. stressful. It was pretty yeah. cool. Um, All right. What's what's your favorite crowdfunding campaign that you have backed ooh. that you did were not involved in? Um there's one that I actually just got. It's um, character building enamel pins. And I don't have it on me. But they're basically like little emblems that say like human, elf, changeling. And then it has little pins that you add to it that are like mage, wizard, warrior, thing like that. And it when you stack them, it looks what? like a badge. So it's like huh. a D&D character sheet with a pin? Yeah. It's okay. so cool. I got to see if I can. Uh, that sounds pretty rad, actually. Let's see. That that actually kind of does. <laughs> Matt, how come you didn't get me that for Christmas? Um, Because I was going to get you the Dolly Parton book, but it was. It was so <laughs> I'm just going to put this right here. All right. Can I bring up your screen? Yeah, you can put it up. There, this, this, this person right here. Oh, that's cool. So these were the pins that we got. Oh, it's totally D and D. Yeah, it's super D and D. I like said that is pins. entire sarcasm. I feel great that I got it though. Uh, hashtag remember Gore, first D and D <laughs> character. Oh boy! Hey, I'm just saying you'll always remember your first character. Oh, this is your Indiegogo, huh? Yeah, if you guys want to check out, um, this is my um, Indiegogo page as it currently stands. Let me put a link in the... Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, this page is actually going to show quite differently for Gemma than it would show for anyone that tries to just go onto the page right now. Yeah, so this is a preview of what I see on the back end. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can put the link in chat now. I just wanted to make sure that people didn't go to it and go, wait a minute. It's not letting me click back it yet. <laughs> so yeah, everybody yeah. make sure you go to that link. There's a little follow button that you can use. There's also a little share link you can throw up on social media there. And hint, nudge, nudge. Share it out for Gemma. I'll, I'll share you with the... Hashtag do it for Gemma. <laughs> the Kickstarter page. So... You know, something that you need to consider when you're building your campaign is your story. And that's this section here where it explains your product. Um, one thing I definitely recommend is going and building yourself a branding guide for your page. So if you, you know, you're going to notice here that th there's certain things I'm doing to make it unified. And that is like, I decided to go with like a starry background with this particular typeface that's called universe. And, okay. um, you know, the, the subtext is a version of universe. I think, I think this one's like bold and this one's like narrow or something. And, you know, showing off your product is important. Um, if they want to read, there's definitely plenty to read. I think it's a little too much, <laughs> but, um, you know, be proud of your, your product and show it off. And, um, 
one thing, you know, this goes towards building your audience. I'm just going to talk about this real quick is um, Temerity is free to read online. You don't have to back the book to buy it. Um, the reason for that is we live in a free market now where it's most content is free. And if you try to charge for it up front, people just aren't going to look at your stuff because there's plenty of free content out there. And mm -hmm. we live in a society now where it's, we don't buy out of necessity. We buy because we want to support an individual or a business a lot of times, especially when it comes to Kickstarters and comics and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, your backers are supporting you as an individual more now than ever has in the past. It's about backing in like a person and you know giving them a product that they can fall in love with first is important for that to happen so. I've, I've seen a lot of people that will back just even just specific characters yeah i mean they'll back on account of that or they'll back because a specific cover artist worked on this one or they'll back because a certain colorist yep. worked on it yep people um, back for the person creating it a lot mm -hmm. of the times now rather than the product um, if you can establish yourself as a reliable creator, um, you're going to get to a point where they're like, oh, Gemma's launching another thing. Well, I'm going to back it because I know I'm going to get it and it's probably going to be pretty good. So if you guys get 2,600 backers, how many pages are you going to have to set aside in the book for supporters? Oh, gosh. <laughs> have you thought about this? No. <laughs> have you? Have you taken a moment and a step back to realize that, that this next Temerity book is going to be pretty big? If you just go with really, really fine that, print. Right? <laughs> you know, if it takes five pages, if it takes ten pages, I'm going to do it. So, anyways, you can see now. everything is, you know, kind of similar feeling here. Um, for my particular project, because I am doing shipping separately, I made sure to include how much every item is going to weigh. Mm. So like here's four ounces, 5.6 ounces, uh, 0.1 ounces for stickers. So that way when people get to this chart down here of the weights, and like, okay, how much am I going to be paying for shipping, especially for internationals? Like, oh, eight, you know, between one and two pounds, it's the same weight. Once you go over nine ounces, Hopefully, maybe they'll build a package that's just under two pounds so they can hit that $25 um, shipping rate. And keep in mind, everyone that is watching, um, it is up to the buyer to actually handle any local tariffs or yes. taxes, anything like that for international shipping. Yeah. Um, so that isn't something that you actually personally have to worry about with your crowdfunding campaign when you're doing it. But it is something you probably want to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might yeah. want to let someone know if, if they're shipping something that would cost a considerable amount to, to push through tariffs. Yes. And, um, I know that some Kickstarters will just put the, the worth of the package at like $1, but, um, that's technically mail fraud and, uh, punishable mm -hmm. by prison apparently in the United States. So, uh, I don't do that. Run, Matt, run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was going to ask you about one of these um uh the tiers. It's a mystery package. Oh god. Is there yes. anything that you can tell us without giving away any secrets? About the mystery package? Yeah. Um it's just going to um have a mix of things um from the campaign but also maybe from other campaigns that I have done or Chad has done. So like Art of Chad Harden might be in there, um, Children of Elder. And then we're planning on putting like some original art pieces in these mystery packages. So like here's the what? first issue of Temerity. What? With a, with a drawing on it. Hold, hold on. Hold on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So like we're, we're going to be putting stuff like like that. Yeah, I feel like we we might need to have a conversation. 
So, okay. okay. And I believe that's going to be putting some in as well. Some of these will be add-ons that you can just add on. Wait, wait. Exactly could what could you just take everything in your hand right there? Just, just set it back there on that shelf for my mystery bag. <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, and you, you and, don't specifically tell other people that they aren't getting those. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But I, look, yeah, work the, with me here, Gemma. Come yeah, on, right here. I'll cut the Come stream on. right now. Let's, let's work friends. this out. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that um, you spend a hundred dollars, but you get at least one hundred and fifty dollars worth of product. Oh, that is cool. So, and considering just, you're looking at like original Gemma and. And Chad Harden art remarked on the cover of a book that's fairly exclusive to begin with. I bet's like what four dollars. So how many am I going to get? What? I was spacing out there. Yeah, I saw that you were. So I was just going to try to trick you into saying <laughs> I was going to get multiple books. <laughs> but lucky for you, you dodged it. You beat me this time. <laughs> yeah. So um, really quick, I want to go over stretch goals because um, we kind of talked about it and then we got distracted. Uh, for stretch goals, um, you want to make sure that your stretch goals are not going to bankrupt you. There have mm -hmm. been Kickstarters that make a million dollars and get really, really excited and offer all these amazing stretch goals. And then it actually ended up bankrupting them. I think it was a card game mm -hmm. or something or a board game. They made a million dollars and went bankrupt thanks to their stretch goals. Um, so on the Excel sheet that I shared, um, there is a tab that is specifically for stretch goals. Um, when you know, you know, you can write when they unlock sure. the title. Mm -hmm. You want to share, share it? Again? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so down here, there's tabs. There's lots of tabs. Um, but, you know, for Temerity specifically, I have when they unlock what the title is. I can copy paste it straight into my graphics and then how much the stretch goal will actually cost. So your first few stretch goals, you want to make them cheap or even cost you nothing except for time. So, you know, for ours is like all the books are signed. Um, the digital copies are upgraded to crypto comics versions. What? Um, hey, wait, that sounds, yeah. what, what was this? What <laughs> so was this? this is the first, um, all of our PR, instead of just handing out PDF copies of our digital comics, they'll actually be blockchain crypto comics yes. that, that are worth real monies. <laughs> Lordy, I'm <laughs> it's a good thing my camera's not working right now. That just happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, you know, you can work towards really big stretch goals. Just make sure that your stretch goals between that are attainable and easy. Um, like, stickers are a big one. Um, they weigh like nothing, they'll fit in your package and they're relatively cheap to make. Um, same with mini prints. And fans um, love them. Yes. Fans absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're love very, stickers. they're very collectible. And if you only offer them during the campaign, then they become extra special as well. And then you know sometimes we do book upgrades like foil stamping on the covers. We do extra content like um, a bonus comic that I'm going to draw maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know here we have like an exclusive pin at thirty thousand because that's like our Ooh. our ultimate goal is thirty thousand. And, you know, everyone who backs gets a pin in their package that features the cover of the comic on it. Cool. Like an enamel pin. And so that one's expensive, but it is for a really big goal. And because we have our lovely cheat sheet here, we know that we can afford it because our net should be very much in the positive at this point. Okay. Um, I do want to make a quick note on this net here. Um, I am showing this to you because I want to be, you know, so you know what we're looking at on the back end. Um, this might look like a really big number, but you have to be aware that 
Chad and I, and even Enrique, have not even been paid a penny at this point, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of these projects, like pins and stuff, like, oh, they're making a lot of money. Um, and you have to realize that they have spent hundreds of hours on these things. And the idea is that this money goes towards the creators at this point so they can keep making products like this and don't have to take the other jobs to pay the bills that eventually this money becomes our full-time job. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and even when you think about it, 19,000 isn't that much to split between all the people that work on a book as well, guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, correct. And when you, when you factor in the fact that, I mean, a comic can easily take six months, nine months, a year longer. I mean, it's a labor of love for sure. But keep yeah. in mind that these creators, a lot of times they're doing this because it's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. And it might sound like a lot of money to see 19000 Yeah. But I mean, factor it this way. If they were to hit 70000 right there, that shows 51000 in profit. $51,000 split between all the people that are working on this is still not even minimum wage. If they were mm -hmm. just working a minimum wage job. Yeah. So and, and keep like, that in mind. Yeah. It's like 50,000. Oh yeah. That's a great income to make in one year, but you're splitting it amongst a number of people. Mm -hmm. The idea is that hopefully, you know, you're making enough that you can crowdfund several times a year to be able to make up the uh, mm -hmm. amount you need to live. Um, and, when people set their crowdfunding goal, ours is 4,000. That is net zero. Um, that's just to get it out there. And yeah. also, um, we actually order excess amounts of product so we can sell them later for profit. So consider that when you're creating your, your campaign. How much do I want now to fulfill, but how much excess do I want to sell later? So if your campaign does really, really well, then be like, okay, I want to make five times the amount because I know it'll sell in the future. Or if it just, you know, you fund, but just barely make, okay, if funded, but I'm just going to order like maybe an extra 30% because they'll sell, but not like extremely well. Sort of. I feel like. I feel like that's very important to note right now too, where we don't have the conventions to go to and sell floppies as, yes. as easily as we had a year ago, say. Mm -hmm. um, and we aren't exactly sure when or how that's going to change in the future. So yeah, it it's know. been a rough year for a lot of creators. Um, down here, I also have like reward levels, so you can see all my reward levels: the price, the title of it, if it's digital or physical. Um, if there's a limit, like if you're only offering 10 or 5 or 1. So I did a limit on Kickstarter and a limit on Indiegogo. And then if there's a discount, um, because they're buying a bundle, the exact mm -hmm. weight that Ooh. will be. Um, and then the description, so I can copy and paste them into the reward levels on Insta or Indiegogo and Kickstarter. And then all the items. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a really straightforward way to keep track of all of my reward levels and all the variants and how much I'm charging and the weights. And then I got my shipping rates here that I have all set up for myself. So I know how much things will cost. I have a to-do list for all the people doing the stuff. And then I have a list of promoters here. I'm not going to click on that because that's for me um, mm -hmm. where I list all the people I know how to contact them, whether or not I think they'll share the product project. Okay. That and is fantastic. Yeah, it's it's a really good way to make sure that, you know, you're accessing all your resources, but it's all on one sheet. So you don't have to go all over the place. And like I also have like a write-ups thing here of like all the written stuff that, you know, for the story. Mm -hmm. So I can make sure that it's all typed out correctly you know i can never spell indiegogo right i don't know what that deal is but <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it, and like i have here like all my synopsis my summaries so i have like taglines my short synopsis my medium and my long so that way when i'm promoting on instagram or social media 
Twitter only allows for this type of tagline, whereas Instagram might allow for this type of tagline, and Tumblr might allow for this type of description. So it's all there and easy to access. So when you're marketing, you know, when you're marketing, write down everything you do and keep it somewhere because you're going to be using it again, most likely, as you go through your campaign and are back and are promoting it. That's brilliant. Crypto okay. Comics needs one of those. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to head up Lindsay. I'm going to say, hey, can you write this up for me? And she's going to go, you quit talking to Gemma. <laughs> I'll also, on my stretch goals, I have up to 100,000 here, but I only did up to 15,000 on my actual page at first because, you know, that way you're not promising all the way up to 100,000. If you need to, um, you can change those as the campaign progresses. So it's like, oh, this is going way faster than I need to. You can move around your stretch goals and stuff, and it's not written in stone or on mm -hmm. an image in your Kickstarter. Um, another thing is I try to keep my type, like my big blocks of text, I try to keep them as actual text. I don't put them in graphics. Um, that's one problem I've seen with a lot of campaigns is they'll take their text and they'll put it on a really cool background as an image. And the um, it's not good. Like, this, a web crawler can go through and it can read that, but it cannot read this, right? Mm -hmm. A web crawler, this is an image, it cannot read it. And exactly. also when you're on mobile, you can't zoom in necessarily on this. So I actually check and make sure my page looks good on mobile as well as on a desktop when it comes to these types of graphics. Um, because I, I think 90% of people who back Kickstarter or Indiegogo now, they're just on their phone. They're not on a desktop. <laughs> so you need to make sure they can read it. And then when, you know, with these text blurbs, you know, you can get web crawlers and SEO on that. So mm -hmm. just a thing to think about. It will look, you know, might look cool with a faded, crinkly paper background, but... <laughs> it makes it very hard to read. Okay, I'm just going to go cry to myself in the background now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, got a degree in crinkled green paper. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I mean, kidding, I'm kidding. You've guys, you guys have backed a lot of campaigns, right? Oh, yeah. And you've probably seen where the text is all an image. Yep. On And sometimes they pick like really cool typefaces that are impossible to read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at like, every metal band ever. <laughs> uh, let me check here on chat real quick. Rose Kirby from YouTube says, so I'd like to know what's going to go on with the Indiegogo. And is it Tuesday the 19th at 10 a.m.? Or is it Tuesday evening? Uh, so Indiegogo, I believe, is going live on the 20th. 20th our time, right? Yeah. Our so, plan is to make it go live on the 20th. because So it'll be about 24 hours after the start of the Kickstarter, Rose. Yeah. Um, but I will and, say this we're going to have a live stream on the 19th. Yes. So you'll see right when that Kickstarter is up and rocking and rolling. <laughs> and we try to promise Gemma that we are only going to take one hour of her time. And we are always bad about this because we're already <laughs> almost 15 minutes over. <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. So I... Do me a favor, I'm... chat. Hold all of your remaining questions. Make sure you guys come back on that live stream that we're putting up on the 19th. You guys are going to see information for that coming up all over our social media platforms. So it's going to be very easy to find it. And in the meantime, we're going to do a giveaway, but this one's going to be a little different than we usually do. I know you can't see my face, but I promise it's excited. The rosy cheeks, big smile, everything. So what we are going to do is we are going to do a giveaway on the live stream for anyone that has been posting throughout this next week with the hashtag temerity and hashtag crypto comics in their social media posts. We're going to be Ooh. combing through. We're going to be finding these yours truly. That's for Iowa crypto comics, as well as M Scott Russell, as well as Jared, as well as Lindsay. And we might even 
convince Gemma to give away some things. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're go what we're going to do is we are going to go through the social media posts. We're going to be finding these hashtags. Uh, if you've been doing Temerity Comics, JD Smith, or JD Smith did yours. Says, "What if I've been doing hashtag Temerity Comics?" We'll still find it. Yes, you're good to go there. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find these and we're just going to randomly award giveaways right there on your post. So watch for those. Um, at the end of the entire week, I should say, right? Yeah, one week. One week from now. Uh, so on the 19th, on the it's so confusing. They're doing an Indiegogo <laughs> and a Kickstarter and it's screwing us up here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. When we do when we do that Kickstarter live stream, though, we're going to go through and show some of the some of the content that's made. Make sure you throw some funny jokes. Make sure they're appropriate. We, You know who we're looking at in chat. You know who you are. Oh, Chuck Spoo says, everything looks amazing, Gemma. Thank you. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to give away swag packs to everyone that's a winner. And we're going to take the top five and do t-shirt giveaways. Ooh. And these are going to be the only time you can get the Temerity t-shirt. After this, we're retiring the design. It will no longer be available. There's going to be five in the world. That means I don't have one. That means Gemma doesn't have one. That means M. Scott Russell doesn't have one. Oh, yeah, Gemma. What? I'm not giving you one of these. That way I can say that it's exclusive to five winners. <laughs> so only these five people. So that means that when conventions come back and you go rolling up to Chad Harden or Jimmy Young's booth and you've got one of those five shirts, they're going to know that you're one of those hardcore fans. So make sure you share that out. Oh, Make sure you share the word. We and just got one Jennifer of the Bush. coolest comments I've ever seen right there. Motivation unlocked. unlocked. <laughs> nice. So with that being said, thank you so much, Gemma, for doing this with us. I know... We didn't hit all the things we talked about wanting to hit even yeah. close, I guess. We hit like 15% of them. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll convince you to come back on another day and do some yeah. Um, oh, I just want to reiterate a couple things real quick. Um, the most important thing about doing a crowdfunding campaign is being reliable and having open communication. You need to make sure that you are talking to your backers and letting them know what's going on, even if things aren't going well. In fact, that's probably mm. the most important time to be communicating with your backers is if something went wrong and you need to delay. Um, nothing makes a backer more anxious and angry is if they're waiting and they don't know why. And you think that you just ran away. <laughs> you know, I've noticed you actually do a really good job of making your backers feel more like a community member than just a typical backer, just all that communication and everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. So there you go. Yay. Hopefully this was informative and helpful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. So thank you again, though, Gemma. We really appreciate it. And with that, thank you, Matt for always putting on such a sweet show. Thank you for letting me join it and hang out. <laughs> Thank you, chat, for being so involved. And we will leave you with our standard outro video right after this. Wonder Friends powers activate in the form of an ice pencil. In the form of a fluffy cat. <laughs>